After being hospitalized due to an illness contracted from my husband, I recovered at my parents' home and finally returned to our house after a long while. There was a pile of mail in the mailbox. Among them was a termination notice for my husband, Shoei. Wondering what had happened, I hurriedly called Shoei. Mamiko? What's up? Why are you calling in the middle of the day? Oh. I just had a little thing. Where are you now? At the company? I'm in Kyushu on a business trip today. Is there something you want to talk about? I'm in the middle of a negotiation, so could you call me back later? Oh, yes. As I weakly replied reflexively, the call was disconnected. How could such a ridiculous thing happen? What on earth is he doing? Confused, I decided to contact his former boss. The boss listened to my story and explained. Then, Ms. Aizawa, do you plan to stay at your parents' home from now on? Yes. I'm thinking of divorcing him. I see. How about we join forces on this one? With those words from the former boss, I felt a surge of fighting spirit against Shoei. My name is Mamiko Aizawa, a 38-year-old housewife. Though, I'm neither a full-time nor a part-time worker at the moment. What do you call a housewife recuperating at her parents' home in society? I collapsed at work six months ago, was rushed to the hospital, and underwent surgery immediately. The post-surgery progress is good, but due to various reasons, I quit the company where I had been working. Now, I am recuperating at my parents' home in the neighboring prefecture. Until then, I had been working at the same trading company as my husband, Shoei. I met Shoei about 10 years ago. He was a promising member of the sales department at the company. I was in the general affairs department and had no particular contact with the sales department until then. However, our relationship began at the company's New Year's party. In this large company, it was customary to rent out a hotel hall and hold a party. During the party, there was a bingo game, and we started talking because we called bingo at the same time. Since then, we started dating across departments and decided to get married in less than two years. Perhaps one reason for deciding to marry was because I was nearing 30 at the time. He came to my parents' home, an old bamboo craft shop in the neighboring prefecture, to ask for permission to marry me. And he received permission to marry me. At that time, my brother, who is four years older than me, said, If you make her unhappy, I won't forgive you. I still remember his intimidating presence to this day. My brother was already married, and my sister-in-law, always cheerful, used to say to me, you really are a siscon. Showing how sweet and concerned he has always been towards me. I was born and raised in such a family. Our home was a busy place with my parents, grandparents, my brother and his wife and their children, and even craftsmen living together. Our family home sat on a large property, with a bamboo forest standing tall at the back. I loved the rustling sound of the bamboo leaves and the clattering noise they made when they touched each other as the wind blew through the forest. I would have liked to become a craftsman myself, but unfortunately, I was quite clumsy. Plus, I lacked physical strength. Bamboo processing is quite labor-intensive, and our family dealt with various types of bamboo, from delicate white bamboo crafts to more robust green bamboo crafts. My father was well known in the area for his white bamboo crafts. His delicate works were truly beautiful. On the other hand, my brother took after my grandfather and worked with green bamboo crafts. The difference lay in the pre-processing of the bamboo used for materials. White bamboo crafts involved heating the bamboo to straighten it and then removing the oil, a process my father was involved in. He would then store it in that condition, 
creating thin strips 1 to 2 mm wide to craft delicate dragons and decorative items. But that's not all. He once accepted a city's request to create a large object. I remember being moved by the mix of delicacy and boldness in that work. Meanwhile, the green bamboo crafts my brother makes are primarily utilitarian items. For example, large baskets used by farmers for sun-drying or sturdy handled baskets, and large baskets with carrying straps. In the past, many people made these, but now there are fewer craftsmen, so people specifically order them. Items that were common in the Showa era but have now disappeared are being recreated. Watching my grandfather work, my brother chose a different path from my father. The way he skillfully splits the freshly cut green bamboo into even strips to create meters long strips and quickly weave a basket is something I admire greatly, even as his sister. But Mamiko, don't get too close just because it's interesting. He often said that. When I asked why. Bamboo is flexible and soft. But the thin strips you'd touch with your bare hands could cut you. Thanks to his training, his hands had become tough, and it took more than just a little to injure him. However, I once cut my finger on a strip less than one millimeter thick when I tried to weave a round basket. My brother made quite a fuss about it at the time. If I hadn't been so clumsy, I could have made them too. Even before that, you don't have the strength for it. Indeed, that was also true. Carrying, splitting, peeling, weaving. Bamboo before it dries is very heavy. These tasks require considerable physical effort. That was another reason I gave up on it. That's why I sought employment outside and then got married. But maybe the smooth sailing of married life was only true at the beginning. I fell ill six months ago. There were some warning signs of my ill health. But I could hardly bring myself to tell Shoei, who was always busy. Not just Shoei, I couldn't tell my in-laws either. After getting married, seven to eight years passed without having children. My kind in-laws said, children are a blessing, so it can't be helped, making me feel concerned for them. I couldn't worry my in-laws any further. Both of us were busy with work, and I never brought up starting a family. No, I never even intentionally thought about it. That's why perhaps I was never meant to have children. I had almost given up and neglected going to the gynecologist. Then one day, I was struck by severe abdominal pain and fever. Followed by low blood pressure, I collapsed at work. When I regained consciousness, I was in a hospital bed. Pain shot through my body as the anesthesia wore off. According to the doctor, I had developed peritonitis. That's why I was rushed for emergency surgery. I was shocked by the situation I found myself in. Certainly, I could never say that I felt well. I always had severe menstrual pain, so I thought it was just an extension of that. But I was wrong. Chlamydia. To my shock, the diagnosis was a sexually transmitted disease. And from there, another illness. It was cervicitis. And from the inflammation in my pelvis, it had progressed to peritonitis. The doctor said it was slightly late in being detected. Shoe was quickly tested too, and the result came back positive. In his case, it just hadn't developed into symptoms. Since getting married, no, even years before marrying, I hadn't been with a man. And these symptoms had only appeared in the last year or two. If that was the case, Shoei was the only possible source. When it was decided I had to be hospitalized, Shoei said it was a tough break, but nothing more. Yes, because of this, I truly could no longer hope for children. I was filled with frustration, but at that time, I hadn't yet confronted him about the cause. I should have asked where he picked it up, but I didn't have the courage to ask. 
Even if it was from a brothel, I told myself he just went there to release his pent-up sexual frustration amidst his busy schedule. How naive I was to convince myself of that, I thought later on. Regardless, he had been involved with someone else. And during my hospital stay, I was just zoning out. The fact that I had contracted an STD. And the realization that I definitely could not have children anymore weighed heavily on me. I had given up on the idea of having children, not because our relationship had faded, but because I thought it wasn't a physical issue. Never did I imagine it would be my body putting a stop to it. I spent my days in a state of gloom, lying on the hospital bed. Sometimes, I would gaze out the window aimlessly. My mother had flown in from the next county to stay with me, but given my condition, we hardly spoke to each other. Then one day, I got a message from Shoei saying he would visit, and while I wondered why he would come during the day, I was secretly happy. Since I had to stay hospitalized for a while, I was on a leave of absence from work, living a life where I saw no familiar faces except for my mother, and though my boss visited once, the nature of my illness made our conversation somewhat distant. My colleagues in the same department must have been busier in my absence. So, there was no sign of anyone coming to visit me. It was Shoei. Had he gotten a ride from a colleague? As I watched, thinking this, I gasped. Shoei walked around to the driver's side and kissed a woman through the window. Then the woman waved at him, poking her face out slightly. I must have seen it wrong, this must be someone else, my eyes must be mistaken. Thinking this, I returned to my bed. Soon after, Shoei arrived, asking if I felt better today. I suppressed my desire to ask how he had come, engaging in conversation with Shoei instead. But for some reason, he never mentioned the illness. Being my husband, he must have been instructed by the doctor to take medication. Despite him being the definite source of the infection, he never brought up the subject. Not a single word of apology from him. On top of that, his attitude of openly worrying about me. I couldn't understand what Shoei was thinking at all. That's why I couldn't bring myself to tell Shoei about the scene I had witnessed earlier. Even if I confronted him, I was sure Shoei would just evade the issue. I was convinced of it. And once Shoei left, I was left with nothing but time to rest and think with nothing much to do. About our past life, the future, and about Shoei. He was always busy with work, with days he wouldn't come home. Why didn't it seem like he wanted children? And what should I do now? How should I face my in-laws now that I am completely unable to have children? Even though the cause is undoubtedly Shoei. I spent my days blaming myself. Then one day, my brother and sister-in-law came to visit. They came to give my mother, who had been with me all this time, a break. Good to see you looking well, Mamiko. Saying that, my sister-in-law hugged my head. When we heard you collapsed and needed emergency surgery, our whole family was in a panic. My brother was holding some personal items that my mother had asked him to bring. But really, it must have been tough. How's he doing? My brother looked around and said it with a hint of disgust. He seems to be as busy as ever. He's the sales manager, after all. But still. My brother seemed unsatisfied. Mamiko, why don't you come back home for a while after you're discharged? Dad and Mom are worried about you going back to your house alone. Right. You should just relax for a while, we'll take care of everything. I thought it would be best for me as well. I believed being alone with my thoughts wasn't good for my health. So, when I was discharged, I moved my personal belongings and computer out of our house with my brother and his wife. I explained to Shoei that I wanted to recuperate for a while. And I also told him I was quitting my job. Still, his response seemed detached, 
as if it was someone else's problem. And still, I hadn't asked him. Where did Shoei pick up this disease? How much had he played around before we got married? Or even after we got married? Who was that person who dropped him off in that car? I had so many questions I wanted to ask. But at that time, I was too scared to ask any of them. Afterward, when I returned to my parents' home, I decided to sleep in a separate annex. There are a few small huts on the property just for sleeping. They're for young craftsmen to live in. My rural home, away from the city center, is in a location too remote for young craftsmen to commute easily. Going out for supplies requires a car. Since I don't have a driver's license, my sister-in-law would often invite me to go shopping with her. My parents said I could sleep in the main house, but my brother and his family are there. Three elementary school-aged children, full of energy, a girl and two boys. In this area, to play with neighborhood kids, racing up hills on bicycles is the norm. The house becomes very lively when those siblings come home. And more than anything, seeing children is painful for me now. I had always vaguely thought I would have them someday. Wanted them. But now I know I definitely can't. Loving kids as I do, it's hard to see them, so after meals, I retreat to the annex and started organizing my computer. Since there's no TV in the annex, I started watching videos online, which I never did before, and stumbled upon nature scenery videos, surprisingly popular. On a whim, I recorded the rustling sounds of leaves and the clattering of bamboo segments hitting each other with my smartphone and shared it on social media. Surprisingly, it was well received, with comments appreciating the sound. So, I decided to start a video streaming channel. Even though it was new, the response wasn't bad, and it seemed like many people felt healed by the bamboo forest, just like I did. I began collecting equipment little by little from my savings, capturing video and sound. At night, I would edit them and post a video every few days. This work became a source of healing for me. My parents' and brothers' family watched what I was doing with curious eyes, but I showed them the videos I had uploaded and their reactions. Hey, why don't you handle our PR? According to him, we've always had customers. There's a certain demand, but the craftsmen who came here were pretty much groping in the dark trying to find us. So, he wanted me to film our products and the work environment to show what we have here. But why haven't we done anything like this before? You think we could have done something like this? Now that you mention it, even though we have internet, it's a place where kids hardly even play games, full of people who are disconnected from the digital age, even in this Raiwa era. So, I immediately agreed. And with that, I officially became a part of this workshop. But then, I need to have a talk with him first. Yeah, that makes sense. Everyone, parents and my brother's family included, agreed. So, I decided to go back home once. But when I returned, I was shocked. Despite having lived in the city center for a long time, just a bit away, the air felt completely different. Entering the apartment, I found mail overflowing from the mailbox. I entered the room, holding it. Opening the door, I hadn't been home since being hospitalized, so it's been almost half a year the house was left empty. Maybe because of that, the air felt unfamiliar and stale. I placed the mail on the living room table and opened the windows to air out the space. If people live somewhere, their unique scents permeate the room. This room didn't smell like Shoei and me living here anymore. Then, on a whim, I went to the bedroom. Opening the bedroom door, I instinctively covered my nose and mouth. The bedroom was filled with a woman's scent, not mine. Oh, how I hated it. I immediately closed the door and returned to the living room. Sitting down, I laid my head on the table. My eyes fell on one of the pieces of mail. 
It was from the company, maybe they sent the tax withholding certificate needed after my resignation? Thinking this, I picked it up, then noticed there was another envelope just like it. One was addressed to me, the other to Shoei. Curious, I first opened the one addressed to me. Inside was indeed the tax withholding certificate I expected. But there was also a letter titled, Notice of Company Bankruptcy and Absorption Procedures. Bankruptcy? Wait a minute. I read through the document closely. How could that large company have? Then, hesitantly, I opened Shoei's letter. I know it's wrong to open someone else's mail, but my curiosity got the better of me this time. Receiving letters in the same envelope at the same time, what does that mean? If it's the same content, he should have received it at the company. What does this mean? As I opened it. A termination notice? Despite the bankruptcy, it's not a small office, and there are considerable numbers of employees in each department. If there's a company willing to absorb us even after bankruptcy, it shouldn't just lead to dismissal so easily. Anger was bubbling up inside me. I hurriedly called Shoei. Since returning to my parents' house, he had been sending messages to check on me, but I hadn't called him directly until now. But now I felt it was necessary, so I made the call. Mamiko? What's up? Calling in the middle of the day? His voice sounded somewhat irritated. Ah, I just needed to talk. Where are you now? At the company? I'm in Kyushu on a business trip today. Is there something you want to talk about? Yes, yes. A business trip? What is he talking about? I'm in the middle of a negotiation right now, can we talk later? Yes. I weakly agreed, and the call was disconnected. A business trip? Negotiation? I didn't understand. After thinking for a moment, I decided to call my former boss. Surprisingly, he picked up quickly. Excuse me, this is Mamiko Aizawa. It's been a while. Aizawa. I could hear noisy voices in the background. Surprised, my former boss must have moved somewhere quieter because it became silent. We started the conversation anew. What's going on? I sent your tax withholding certificate a little while ago. Ah, uh, no. Actually, I've been recuperating at my parents' place. I just came back today for some errands. Oh, is that so? Yes. And today, I noticed the mail from the company for the first time. What's this about my husband's termination notice? Huh? He seemed unsure of how to respond. You haven't heard anything? What do you mean? Shoei Aizawa leaked our client's information to a rival company. Hearing this made me gasp. This sounded like a joke to me, who had been living peacefully in a different world until now. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. Ah. Uh. As if remembering something, my former boss explained. Shoei was rumored to have been involved with Yuko Naki from the secretarial department. And when Shoei disappeared from the company, Yuko Naki also vanished. Looking into the computer Yuko Naki left behind revealed evidence of the information leak. So, Shoei was with Ms. Naki? It might be the other way around. I heard from the girls in the secretarial department that Naki had a boyfriend outside the company. A honey trap? Then who was the woman who drove Shoei to the hospital? Was it Yuko Naki? Um, I called my husband earlier. Did he pick up? He sounded surprised. Perhaps Shoei hasn't been answering calls from the company. That's what I thought. He said he's on a business trip in Kyushu and currently with a client. I see. He seemed to ponder for a moment. 
Do you plan to stay at your parents' home going forward? Yes. I came back to talk to him about this situation. Saying these words felt like the end of everything. But... I'm thinking of getting a divorce. Is that so? Then, how about we join forces on something? What my former boss told me was very intriguing. I checked everything that was missing in the room, took what I needed, and first headed to the city hall. To get two copies of the divorce papers. One copy I signed and stamped, and left it on the table, not to use it immediately. It was a declaration of my intent. And I also left the envelope containing the termination notice on top of it. Additionally, I installed a camera and microphone. I bought something decent and set it up. And when my sister-in-law picked me up from the station, I was surprised, I didn't expect you to return just for the day. What happened? It's a long story, I'll tell you about it later. Really? But you seem kind of excited. Do I? Maybe I am. I must be feeling somewhat elated deep down. When I got home, I immediately shared my former boss's proposal with my family. Everyone showed their anger towards Shoei all at once. What's that about? That's terrible. So, you're planning to divorce him, then? Yes. The house was reeking of another woman's scent. I don't know where he is now, but I don't think he's seen the termination notice. Is he running away, I wonder? Maybe. But what will you do? There's a good chance he won't come back. But he hasn't blocked my calls yet. It seems he has blocked the companies, though. Then, I explained my former boss's proposal to everyone. That's great. We can do it here, right? Can I tell our young workers about this? Please. He's quite timid, despite what he says. About half a month later, Shoei and Yuko finally came to my parents' house. Well, to be precise, they were more or less brought there. They were led to the spacious guest room of the traditional Japanese house, where craftsmen in work coats, my parents, my brother and his wife, and the lawyer I had hired for the divorce were all waiting. And the former boss and a lawyer associated with the company. Shoei, Yuko, and one other person. The expressions on these three faces were unusually dark and heavy. Shoei and Yuko looked frightened, but the third person was filled with anger. Let's start with the divorce case of the Aizawa couple. My lawyer presented the reasons for the divorce to Shoei. Starting with the affair with Yuko. When Mamiko called the other day, Mr. Shoei, you said you were in Kyushu on business, correct? However, by that time, you had already been dismissed from the company. Does that serve as proof of the affair? No, that's merely an option. An option? Yes. The affair is one thing, but what Mamiko is most concerned about is that you transmitted an STD to her. What? An STD? What are you talking about? Um, did you not know? What? You've driven this person to the hospital to visit me, haven't you? Eh, uh, how do you know that? Ah, uh. so, it was you who drove the car then? Poor thing. Why am I the poor one here? Because, I was hospitalized due to chlamydia transmitted by this person, which worsened into peritonitis. What, chlamydia? Wait, why didn't you tell me about this? I... I had already started taking medication by then. Huh? You started taking it around the time you went to your wife's place? That's too late. What about me? So, you're saying there was a relationship between you two before this? That is, well. So that's it, Yuko. Another man was glaring at the two. 
I indeed told him to gather data, but I never said to bring back diseases. And you are? I asked the man. Well, it seems it's our turn now. The former boss leaned forward and said. This gentleman here is Masada Tagawa, the assistant manager of the headquarters that absorbed our bankrupt company. Mr. Tagawa deeply bowed to me. And why is Mr. Tagawa here? That's because... No, let me explain. I was using Yuko, my girlfriend, to collect information from your company. So, Yuko was acting as a spy? Yes. It's just a poor excuse from a low life, but I was the one instructing her on what to do. Indeed, it was a low life's excuse. So, you considered the possibility of Yuko and Shoei? It was one of the possibilities, but she was still dating me. He must have believed it wouldn't go that far. As a result, the sales information Shoei held brought considerable profit to us. In short, the downfall of our company also stems from here. The former boss said it with difficulty. But well, since this company absorbed ours entirely, the damage was minimal except for the top executives. And, in many ways, it's actually better than the previous management. Is that so? I felt relieved thinking of my former colleagues. But, it was wrong to take such measures. What goes around comes around, as they say. Mr. Tagawa gave a wry smile. Could it be, Mr. Tagawa? Yes, exactly that. I've been feeling off lately and got tested, and sure enough. Yes, you transmitted it to me. Then that means, me? Yuko started to tremble. Well, it's good it was found early. But how long have you been dating? Do you recall anything gynecological that comes to mind? Ah. Uh. After moaning for a while, Yuko suddenly raised her hand and slapped Shoei across the face. What are you doing? Shut up. It's all your fault. Why didn't you tell me? That's because... Well, it's a difficult disease to talk about. The lawyer interjected. We don't know where the infection came from, but it's certain that you transmitted the disease to Mamiko. That's the primary reason for the divorce. Mamiko can claim a divorce and alimony from Mr. Shoei. Not because of the affair. The affair is obviously included. You brought the disease from someone else. But, maybe Mamiko brought it. At least until I gave up on having children, I frequently visited the gynecologist. I was worried there might be something wrong with me. Indeed, there weren't many times, but it wasn't like we never had our moments as a couple. To get this bad, it takes about a year after infection, the doctor said. That's exactly when I gave up on having children and stopped going to the gynecologist. You started being away from home all the time, on business trips or whatever, not knowing what you were doing, but at least you were involved with someone other than me, weren't you? At our company at the time, there was no record of assigning you that many business trips. The records are all there. The former boss added. Also, we're planning to claim damages against both you and Yuko Naki for leaking confidential business information. That's why we brought a lawyer associated with the company here. Eh, uh, me too? Of course. Wasn't that what you were originally asked to do? But I was just... Well, Yuko, I bear some responsibility for that matter. I can defend you to some extent. However, I can't forgive you as a boyfriend for going that far. Why? I was just doing it for you. You thought pillow talk was the way to go for my sake? There could have been smarter ways. But I thought that was the best. I heard rumors he wasn't getting along with his wife and was frequenting brothels. When I approached him, he fell for it easily. 
You, you had that intention with me. Of course. After all, Tagawa was my real target. Why would I seriously get involved with a married older man? At that moment. Enough. My father shouted, silencing everyone. What is all this mess we're being told? Our craftsmen straightened up and stared disapprovingly at the disgraceful trio. Shoei. Mamiko clearly doesn't want to be with you anymore, so just get the divorce done quickly. Father. I've already contacted your parents yesterday, and it seems you've been running away from your home too. Eh? Your family said they won't help you at all. That can't be. Please sign here then. My lawyer placed another divorce paper in front of Shoei. At that moment. Wah! Suddenly, Shoei screamed, stood up, and ran outside barefoot from the veranda. Chase him. My father commanded my brother and the craftsmen. Their swift movements, honed from regular training, caught our attention as we moved to the veranda, watching them run towards the bamboo grove from the spacious yard that doubles as a workshop. One of them shouted, young master, as he ran. Then, a loud clattering noise occurred. Shoei had crashed into a pile of recently cut bamboo. Help me. The freshly cut green bamboo, heavy with moisture, came tumbling down on him. Oh dear. I sighed, almost in exasperation. Afterward, Shoei ended up with a broken leg and bruises everywhere due to the bamboo avalanche. The divorce was successfully finalized. I sold the apartment we lived in and made him pay the alimony in one lump sum, but Shoei's financial troubles were just beginning. He faced a damage claim lawsuit from my former boss and others, which meant a long legal battle was ahead. Being injured and in the middle of a lawsuit meant Shoei had a hard time finding a new job. As for Yuko, panicked, she got tested at a gynecologist and found early signs of chlamydia, shuddering at the thought of what could have happened if she had ignored it. Yuko too was fired and faced her own lawsuit for damages. It seems the relationship between Mr. Tagawa and Yuko is over. Hearing about their ordeal, I was utterly dismayed at Shoei's attempt to brush off the disease. As for me, alongside video streaming, I started working as a PR staff for my family's business. I enjoy introducing my father's delicate crafts and my brother's robust utility items every day. Lately, I've been capturing children doing simple bamboo crafts on camera. While my heart still aches thinking about my physical condition, I can't stay hurt and alone forever. The popularity of my bamboo forest videos has grown, attracting comments not just from domestic viewers but also internationally. Many people enjoy the sounds I love so much. That has become my purpose in life. Recently, I've started having personal conversations with one of the craftsmen. While I'm not thinking about remarriage just yet, who knows what the future holds. The bamboo forest offers different sounds every day. I want to continue enjoying these peaceful days.